Good afternoon, everybody. Today, I'm going to discuss a very crucial and important topic in nephrology, which is renal biopsy. All of us as nephrologists uh, request biopsy, okay? And today, I'm going to discuss and highlight the nephrology perspectives of renal biopsy. So, through this presentation, I'll start with introduction, followed by indications and contraindications of renal biopsy, then a few slides about the how biopsy is done, then the process of informed consent, then I'm going to present, I think, 14 cases, and uh, I'll ask you just to raise the label OB for biopsy, you agree for biopsy, or N, no biopsy. So, to be or not to be, this uh, I'm going to discuss 14 cases. And then I'll end with special issues. Let us start with biopsy. You will find on the YouTube, in the channel, uh, some presentations, uh, different uh, dates. Uh, so, to start with, is renal biopsy an essential tool for nephrology practice? The answer is yes. Why? Because renal biopsy identifies a diagnosis different from that predicted on clinical grounds. Because if we can predict the diagnosis on clinical ground, there is no need for biopsy. So, this, is, this occurs in 50, 50 to 60% of our patients. Biopsy uh, uh, has a diagnosis that is not predicted on clinical grounds. And it can change the management in 20 to 50%, especially if you are dealing with heavy proteinuria or acute kidney injury, more than 80% of whom have biopsy findings that alter their managements. Moreover, I recommend this article because this article includes a standardized, a standardized classification and reporting of glomerulonephrites. Here, I, uh, because I'm speaking about biopsy, if you look here, these are three grades of different chronicity. We may have mild score, moderate score, or severe score of fibrosis, depending upon the percentages of chronicity, as you see here, minimal, mild, moderate, and severe. If you have a core of renal biopsy and you find a lot of chronicity, severe score of chronicity, this means a lot for us as nephrologists. So biopsy can change the diagnosis and can predict the prognosis and also guide the treatment. So we need biopsy. Another axis. Through the years, there is a change and a transi transition of the biopsy performance from nephrologists to intervention radiologists. So, if you look here to the, this is the data, starting from uh, this date up to the current state, you'll find here the uh, uh, dark the black bar, which reflects the biopsy done by nephrologists, is uh, through the years, there was transition from nephrologists to intervention radiologists. The question is why? This may be caused the nephrologists are indulged in many administrative issues and time-consuming procedures in nephrology, and secondly, the availability of intervention radiologists. But I am myself, I prefer all nephrologists to be trained on biopsy performance. And this is a, an article from uh, Pakistan, showing the bleeding complications and the complication, bleeding complications post-ultrasound guided biopsy done by nephrologists. So 220 cases and as this is the highlights of this article, it is safe, relatively safe procedure. Complication rates following the procedures are minimal. All nephrology programs must train the trainees in performing a biopsy. I agree 100% with this conclusion of this uh, work. And as I mentioned, 
the one of the issues of nephrology competence is uh, the nephrologist should be trained to do biopsy. So I, I think one of the uh, aims and objectives of intervention nephrology associations is to enhance the procedures done by nephrologists. One of them is biopsy. What are the indications and the contraindications of biopsy? Regarding indications, uh, this is the clinical syndrome. So you can you may have a patient who presents with hematuria. So in cases of hematuria, we think of biopsy in the presence of acanthocytes or red cell casts with an elevated serum creatine level or proteinuria. If the patient presents with proteinuria, the proteinuria exceeds one gram per day as measured on multiple visits. This means proteinuria is persistent with no clear comorbidity. Proteinuria above three gram in the absence of diabetes or a rapid increase in proteinuria even with diabetes. Proteinuria less than three gram per day with an elevated serum creatine level with no clear comorbid conditions such as diabetes or hypertension. So this is the sector of proteinuria. If the patient presents with acute kidney injury, so in the setting of acute tubular injury, persistent injury, despite reversal of causes, if serum creatinine didn't return to a baseline within seven to 14 days of injury onset, in the setting of presumptive diagnosis of acute interstitial nephritis, if there, was, uh, there has been no resolution of injury despite removal of culprit medication, all these are indication. So in case of acute kidney injury, we recommend biopsy if we are not dealing with pre-renal, post-renal, or acute necrosis. This means that you have a, a case with systemic disease, unexplained acute renal failure. All these are to be considered for uh, biopsy decision making. Regarding chronic kidney disease, if you have a rapid elevation in serum creatine level or new onset hematuria or proteinuria in a case uh, presents with CKD, I think this is an indication to know the original kidney disease. From this textbook, you'll find here the patients are categorized according to renal syndromes. So in case of nephrotic syndrome, biopsy is routinely indicated in adults. So adult onset nephrotic syndrome is an indication for routine biopsy. And this is what we do. Any nephrotic syndrome in a patient above the age of 15 years, because this is adult onset, this is an indication for biopsy. In prepubertal children, indicated only if clinical fissures, a typical of minimally change disease present. Acute, in a case of acute kidney injury, increase if uh, indicated if obstruction, reduced renal perfusion, and acute tuber necrosis have been ruled out. Because if we have pre-renal, we can give fluids or blood according to the cause of pre-renal. In case of uh, acute tuber necrosis, we may give time for recovery of acute tuber necrosis. Systemic disease with renal dysfunction indicated in patients with a small vessel vasculitis, anti-GBM disease, and systemic lupus erythematosus. Indicated in patients with diabetes only if atypical fissures present. Non-nephrotic proteinuria may be indicated if proteinuria is greater than one gram per day. In the presence of isolated microscopic hematuria, biopsy is indicated only in unusual circumstances. In unexplained chronic kidney disease, may be diagnostic uh, if we think of uh, uh, IgA, even in end stage kidney disease, familiar renal disease, biopsy of one affected member may give diagnosis and minimize further investigation of family members. In renal transplantation, this is our work, indicated if urethral obstruction, urinary sepsis, renal artistinosis, 
and toxic calcineurin inhibitor levels are not present. And usually, we, in, we perform a biopsy for renal transplant patients who present with uh, graft dysfunction. What about contraindication? If there is excess bleeding risk, so increase the bleeding risk with platelet count less than 120 or 100 thousands per cubic millimeter, elevated INR, and the use of anticoagulation, including aspirin, warfarin, heparin, and direct factor 10 inhibitors. Anticoagulation concerns higher risks would exist in patients in whom stopping anticoagulation therapy would pose significant medical risk in the presence of high scores for thrombosis or in the active of antiphospholipid uh, disease. Hypertension, if there is increased systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure, we should control blood pressure first before doing the biopsy. A small hyperoxygenic kidney, indicative of chronic disease, and it should be avoided if estimated GFR is less than 30 ml per minute per adult, average adult surface area. Anatomical kidney problems, vascularity of kidney, abnormalities, anomalies, or multiple cysts increases bleeding risk. So we should put all these points in consideration when we decide for biopsy. In the presence of horseshoe kidney, in this scenario, we can use the non-traditional way, transjugular renal biopsy. Multiple bilateral cysts, if cysts are numerous, it may be difficult to visualize areas that are cyst-free. In the presence of hydronephrosis, biopsy should be delayed until the obstruction is relieved and the only uh, uh, thought if injury persists despite adequate time. In the presence of solitary kidney, if the kidney is visible and the biopsy is safe, there is no increased risk with a solitary kidney performed by an experienced, and this is an important, experienced provider. In the presence of infection, skin infection over the site of the needle insertion can lead to sepsis. Ongoing bionephritis could worsen infection and lead to sepsis. Altered mental status, if the patient cannot cooperate with the biopsy, the risk for injury may be too significant. So we should assure all these points. By another way, the contraindication to renal biopsy includes, contraindications include either problem related to the kidney or problems in the patient. So kidney status related problems include multiple cysts, solitary kidney, acute bionephritis, perinephric abscess, renal neoplasm. In patient status related uh, aspects include uncontrolled bleeding diathesis, uncontrolled hypertension, in the presence of uh, uremia in uh, obese person, in morbid obese persons, or uncooperative patients. These are the contraindications of biopsy, and most contraindications are relative rather than absolute. So whenever we uh, find that the biopsy is critically indicated, we can do biopsy, but with great precautions. Clinical circumstances that necessitate urgent renal biopsy may be overridden except for uncontrolled bleeding diathesis. Regarding the procedure, the procedure is done according to the patient status. If you look here, I like this algorithm. So, the, there is an indication for biopsy. So, we should ask ourselves, is the patient cooperative? Yes. Is he normotensive with no bleeding diathesis? He has two kidney or she has two kidneys. Normal body mass index, if yes, go directly to ultrasound guided pre percutaneous kidney biopsy. If no, he is cooperative, but there is a problem in these issues. Here, you can go ahead for percutaneous renal biopsy, but uh, to have blood on hold. If 
the patient is able to tolerate anesthesia uh, here and you have high degree and the patient is not cooperative if he is not cooperative and and he can tolerate anesthesia we can think of open or laparoscopic biopsy and this is what was done here in, in uh, at urology and nephro center here in Mansoura uh, when the patient in the past has solitary kidney and there was fear of uh, bleeding uh, at that time open biopsy was carried out if the patient is not cooperative and uh, he uh, is not able to tolerate anesthesia we can go to renal biopsy ultrasound guided but also prepare blood or to think of transjugular biopsy and blood on hold so we have many uh, aspects many approaches either to do percutaneous biopsy doing uh, percutaneous biopsy with uh, preserving blood transjugular biopsy open or laparoscopic kidney biopsy and we should individualize our approach according to the patient need in the presence of uh, the uh, professional uh, uh, interve interve uh, interventionist we can do ultrasound uh, guided biopsy for the majority of patients this is a very important point what about the sampling the tissue that we have on uh, biopsy the size of the core is very crucial here the size of the biopsy core affects the probability that the observed glomerular involvement is a true reflection of involvement in the whole kidney. Look here, this is the, uh, the kidney, this is the lower bowl of the kidney, and here we have many dots colored either red, unaffected glomeruli, blue ones, diseased glomeruli. If this is the, if, if we hear the core is A, here you will find missed affected glomeruli but if the core is B you can see here the number of uh, blue dotted uh, affected glomeruli uh, is satisfactory so the size of the biopsy core is essential for adequacy of the sample and this is um, this is the renal biopsy procedure as you see the here the uh, interventionist uh, has his gown everything disinfection this is a needle and this is how the patient is covered after disinfecting the skin and what what do you see here this is the probe the probe is hold here uh, 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 within a sheath this sheath is disposable so I recommend the sitting like this the biopsy needle is introduced at an angle of approximate 70 degrees to the skin and is guided by continuous ultrasound so it is ultrasound guided technique all through the, the procedure the operator is shown wearing a surgical uh, surgical gown although it is maybe not necessary for all cases but we recommend it sterile gloves uh, are essential and maintained uh, of a sterile field uh, all through the procedure and you can see here this is the kidney and the needle in within the lower bowl of the kidney this is the needle and this is the kidney tissue here after firing the gun what happens the inner trocar is advanced within the renal tissue and immediately the cutting cannula is advanced too and then both trocar and the cannula are retracted from the patient and if you open you will find here the piece of kidney biopsy within the group of the needle you can see it uh, on the the this is the core of renal tissue is demonstrated in the sampling notch of the biopsy needle again this is the how uh, after firing the gun the trocar is advanced then the cannula is advanced both of them are ret retracted in closed manner and then we have uh, renal tissue regarding the uh, certain there are some situations where biopsy is challenging in pregnancy 
usually we uh, are afraid of doing a biopsy after 23 or 24 or pregnancy twin, between 23 and 28 it is a po at the gray zone we don't like biopsy anymore after the 28th week of gestation and to do biopsy for pregnancy we should know that the biopsy will change the management of this patient and to be done by a professional operator. This is uh, essential. In solitary kidney, as I mentioned before, it is not absolute contraindication for doing ultrasound blood biopsy, but great caution by an expert in the uh, biopsy uh, performance uh, is essential. The more challenging the, the presence of mechanical ventilation. So in these circumstances, Kidney biopsy can be done under strict and um, special precautions, provided that the biopsy will change the patient management. What about transjugular biopsy? Transjugular biopsy is famous in liver biopsy, but here in the kidney biopsy, it is done in certain centers specialized for doing this maneuver. And the specific indications of transjugular renal biopsy includes uh, include a known case of renal microaneurysms, morbid obese patients, failed hypercutaneous biopsy, in the presence of single function kidney, severe uh, uncorrectable coagulopathy, uncooperative patient and patients on mechanical ventilation, Accusional failure patients undergoing placement of uh, dialysis catheter when other diagnostic studies are needed, such as transvenous liver biopsy and venography. So all these are the specific indications for transjugular kidney biopsy. Be careful because there are some problems here. In this maneuver, the uh, radio contrast aging and media uh, is injected uh, to secure the complications. So if there is a past history of allergy to intravenous contrast media, this is an, a relative contraindication for performing transgenular biopsy. Also relative contraindications include pregnancy, severe cava obstruction, congenital absence of or occlusion of the right internal jugular vein, inferior vena cava or uh, renal vein thrombosis and recurrent uh, course of uh, the uh, renal vein. Regarding the informed consent process, it is not just saying to the patient, do you agree to do biopsy, yes or no? It is not like this. The informed consent should answer the basic questions, including five W's. What is the technique? Why uh, the patient needs biopsy? how biopsy will be uh, carried out, what is the risk benefit, what are the complications, and what are the precautions to lessen and to reduce the incidence of complications. All these five points should be explained to the patient by a simple language, understandable, clear, and professional. And the patient should, have, uh, should sign the consent, and the patient has the right to say yes or no, to accept, to consent, or decline. So to answer some question, what is, what is meant by biopsy is to have bees, small bees from the kidney to be examined under microscope. Why? Uh, as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, to guide the treatment and to tell us about the prognosis, how the biopsy will be carried out by ultrasound guidance. And we start with local anesthesia, then we go to the procedure step by step and to be followed by rest. And the precautions include uh, CBC, blood pressure uh, measurement, CBC, coagulation profile, INR. And we should be careful about the needle gauge. The, we have here in the Atherogen and Nephro Center the 18 uh, gauge. Uh, and personally, I like 16 one. Why? Because 16 is, it is in the middle way between 14, which is more traumatizing, and 18. And in the same moment, it gives us a respected tissue because we need sufficient tissue for uh, perfect diagnosis. But we should be careful because the needle needs a special gun for its size. And secondly, 
the patient, the local anesthesia should be uh, uh, very uh, uh, perfect to avoid any uh, non-convenience of the patient. The number of needle passes should be limited to the lowest possible number because the higher the passes, the higher the risk of complication. We should have a good history about medications, including antiplatelet, because it may increase the risk of bleeding. All the ages are risk for bleeding. High serum creatinine or blood urine nitrogen may predict uh, uh, platelet dysfunction. And here we recommend uh, to uh, check bleeding time if serum creatinine exceeds 2 mg per deciliter. All this should be put in mind. Observation period is important. Here we adopt, we don't allow the patient to go home except uh, if 24 hours after the biopsy uh, passed. Here the observation period less than 8 hours means 33% of complications. And this is a very nice article about factors that can minimize bleeding complication after renal biopsy. And this is the workup of renal biopsy. First assessment. Uh, renal imaging to be sure that everything is fine. The patient has two kidneys, uh, no obstruction, blood pressure is okay, urine culture is trial, so everything is okay for biopsy. Here, drug history, stop aspirin, this is a traditional way. Stop aspirin, clobidogrel, and warfarin seven days before biopsy. Uh, stopping a non-steroidal or heparin uh, one day before biopsy. Bladed count to be above 100,000. Uh, the prothrombin time less than 1.2 times control. The same ABTT less than 1.2 times the control. And the uh, uh, bleeding time, if the if we have uh, the blood urine nitrogen above 56, or here we recommend if serum creatine above 2 mg per deciliter. If it is above 10 minutes, we may think of DDAVB. We don't have the DAVB here in the center. What about complications? This is uh, I postpone complication to this sector because this is one of the most important issues that we should inform the patient about complications by a professional way. So, what are the complications associated with kidney biopsy? Bleeding. That this is the most common complication because this is an invasive procedure. Uh, bleeding may include hematoma, 75% of the cases, and it's small hematoma develop in a high percentage of patients, visualize act active extravasation of at biopsy site with ultrasonography. Subcapsular sub bleed in less than 1%, significant bleeding may lead to subcapsular accumulation and resistant hypertension. Why? Because the presence of subcapsular hematoma compresses kidney tissue, and this is known as beige kidney, and it increases the vascular resistance within the kidney. Retroperitoneal bleeding in 5 to 10%, the complication of persistent bleeding or disruption of clot over biopsy site, image with CT or ultrasonography of and follow-up. Microscopic hematuria is more than 90%. It is a rule because it's an invasive procedure, so microscopic seen under a microscope. Or gross microscopic, and, and this is the percentage of gross hematuria. Persistence may lead to clot formation in kidney uh, or bladder, resulting in obstruction and hydronephrosis. And if we diagnose clot retention, we uh, advocate the urology help. We um, request the urology help for uh, bladder wash. Lumbar vessel laceration is less than one percent and requires a selective angiogram to identify the bleeding vessel. Another complications rather than bleeding include arteriovenous uh, formation, and I'm going to discuss it later. And it is uh, benign uh, in the majority of cases, should be followed up, should be intervened upon if it results in persistence bleeding, hypertension, high output heart failure, or acute kidney injury. These are the indications of dealing intervention uh, for arteriovenous formation. Pain may radiate into inguinal region or peri region, will usually subside and should be treated with acetaminophen uh, if persistent should result in the imaging of the kidney. Infection, low risk, 
but risk is worsened with a skin infection, balonephritis, bleeding, or uh, poor sterile techniques. Nephrectomy incidence is very low. In here in the center, I start my residency on 1993, so I have 26 years. I didn't witness any case of nephrectomy following kidney biopsy. Uh, death uh, incidence is very low. Uh, here we don't have case of mortality following renal biopsy. And this is another data showing that the risk of death may be 0.02. So it is 2 per 10,000 cases. And here the blood obstruction effect to me 1 per 10,000. So this is the data from here or there. If the biopsy is done under standardized uh, scenarios and environment, the complication will be reduced and lessened. But if it is done without respecting all the precautions, this will be uh, problematic. Regarding this point, this is the manual compression and reflex syncop in native renal biopsy. If the compression is strong and followed by abdominal bandage, the patient may suffer from reflex syncop. And reflex syncope is transient hypotension without bleeding. This is after the biopsy. And here you can find from uh, 456 patients, 26 patients encountered intra uh, procedure and post procedure transient hypotension related to the uh, uh, severe uh, heavy compression and abdominal bandage. So, we should take care of these. Uh, regarding the, uh, the requesting CBC, six hour post biopsy and to observe the percent of hemoglobin drop. This is an article showing that in children, if we uh, have a CBC done uh, six hours after the biopsy and we find the uh, drop of hemoglobin exceeds 10%, this can be a good predictor for complication after the biopsy. Now, the most interesting and the most exciting and interactive sector of the presentation I'm going to present a summary for cases, and I will ask you to agree or not to agree. Don't forget to raise label B for biopsy agreement and N for declining biopsy. This is the first case. A 30-year-old male patient, he has 15-year history of type 1 diabetes, 10-year history of hypertension. Urine just shows microscopic hematuria, 1 gram protein per day. Estimated GFR is 60 ml per minute, and he has solitary kidney on ultrasound. Do you agree to for biopsy or decline biopsy? Decline. This is another scenario. This is from the uh, core curriculum of biopsy uh, that is released in the American Journal of Kidney Disease. This is a 53-year-old man with a history of type 2 diabetes mellitus. 14 years without signs of retinopathy or neuropathy and also hypertension for five years controlled with atenolol 50 milligram daily and lisinopril 10 milligram daily is presenting for evaluation of moderate lower extremity edema blood pressure is 130 over 70 with a heart rate 70 with examination finding notable for bilateral pre-tibial edema. Laboratory tests results uh, are relatively unremarkable with a serum creatinine 1 mg per deciliter stable for the last three years with the exception of serum albumin of 2.5 gram per deciliter normal uh, three years prior and urine albumin creatinine is 4.7 which is higher than that of one year ago when it was in this uh, was in this value, urine sedimentation sediment demonstrates five to ten red blood cells per higher bar, high bar field with five percent dysmorphic red cells. So th this is a case of type two diabetes without evidence of retinopathy or neuropathy, and he presents with nephrotic syndrome. Based on this presentation, what are the best next step in the management of this patient? Reassess urine album and creatinine ratio in one month. Increase lysinopril dosage. Initiate treatment with corticosteroid or proceed with kidney biopsy. Proceed with kidney biopsy. Yes, in the presence of here, uh, the patient, yes, is, is diabetic. 
but there is no microvascular. And here, there is a rapid development of nephrotic syndrome. This is an indication of uh, biopsy. I agree with you. So uh, this is the the algorithm. If you have a patient with diabetes and proteinuria, exclude UTI. Uh, ask for urine microscopy for red cell, white cell cast, quantitative proteinuria. Uh, ultrasound is essential. Ser serology, if glomerulonephritis suspected, including ANCA, DNA, C3, and C4. Okay? If you have a typical, you may have typical diabetic kidney disease. If the patient has type 1 diabetes for more than 10 years, with the presence of retinopathy, previous microalbuminuria, no macroscopic hematuria. Macroscopic hematuria is important here because in diabetic patients who may have microscopic hematuria, no red cell cast, enlarged kidneys on ultrasound. If these are the data, this is the course of diabetes and no need for biopsy. Uh, if you have a typical presentation, we have two types of atypical presentation. One, a typical presentation that necessitates biopsy and the other not to do biopsy. Regarding a typical presentation that for this presentation, we think of biopsy. If you have type 1 diabetes with short period, so less than 10 years of diabetes, no retinopathy, nephrotic range of proteinuria without progression through microalbuminuria, macroscopic hematuria, red cell casts. All these are indications for doing a biopsy. So this is a typical presentation, a typical proteinuria in diabetic patient necessitates renal biopsy. But if you have azotemia uh, with uh, papillary necrosis, to, uh, tuberculosis, renovascular disease, in these scenarios we may decline, no, no uh, need for renal biopsy. What is this? This is a nodular sclerosis. Why I put nodular sclerosis here? Just to say, not all cases of nodular sclerosis are because of diabetes. So the causes of nodular, nodular glomerulosclerosis include an exhaustive list. So yes, it may be due to diabetic glomerulus sclerosis, but, but also may be due to chronic membrane operative glomerulonephritis, chronic thrombotic macroangiopathy, tachyasoarthritis, cyanotic heart disease, cystic fibrosis, monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease, amyloidosis, fibronectin glomerulopathy, fibrillary glomerulonephritis, immunotactoid glomerulonephritis, collagen type 3 glomerulopathy, idiopathic nodular glomerulosclerosis, often associated with long-standing hypertension and smoking. So the presence of nodular sclerosis is not the specific for diabetic nephropathy. Let us go to the third case. This is a 30-year-old male patient, non-diabetic. He has a history of 10 years hypertension. Urine shows microscopic hematuria, one gram protein per day, estimate far above 60 milli per minute, and he has solitary kidney. To be or not to be? I think he deserves to be. Here I can, I can agree or disagree with you. There is no necessity, no rushing to do biopsy because kidney function is, is, is accepted, no uh, CKD, uh, or it is sick. If, if we are not sure of the proteinuria if it is above uh, uh, three months or not, but persistent for three months or not, but at least if we have CKD, it is stage one and two. There's no need uh, for uh, rushing at you, especially we have solitary kid. Look at this case. This is a 43-year-old woman with a history of chronic hypertension and a congenitally solitary kidney is presenting for evaluation of new onset proteinuria. Blood pressure is treated with hydro uh, hydrochlorothiazide and lisinopril. Examination, uh, blood pressure is in this range and she has lower leg edema, creatinine 1.4, urine albumin creatinine is 6, it is high, higher than uh, from 6 months ago. 
the question refer to surgery for an open surgical kidney biopsy proceed with a percutaneous kidney biopsy empirically treat with corticosteroid increase lisinopril dose I think we should increase lisinopril dose and the, here this is this case is quite different from the previous one both of them have solitary kidney but here we have nephrotic range of proteinuria so here we can do percutaneous kidney biopsy provided that we have a professional operator okay this is the i think this is the better answer regarding this case a 45 year old male patient blood pressure is fine no medications urine proteinuria on gram per day is mid for above 60 ultrasound normal immunology negative i think it's it is clear no need for biopsy we can just follow him if this is the patient the same but there is a post of serology for lupus i think here the decision will be changed and to proceed for biopsy because biopsy is essential in uh, lupus uh, diagnosis this is another case uh, a patient with body mass index 40 kg per square meter hypertension nephrotic range of proteinuria or or proteinuria for gram per day creatinine is normal albumin is uh, accepted normal ultrasound is normal and nothing in the immunology uh, uh, profile so i think here because of body mass index 40 here it is uh, clear uh, i agree with you that here no need for biopsy but if the patient is the same but both for lupus here i uh, i may think of doing a biopsy because here it is not likely to be obesity related glomerulopathy and maybe lupus nephritis another case 55 year old male body mass index is 36 uh, and he presents with unexplained acute nephritis unexplained yes i agree with you all of you or uh, raise to be yes i agree with you and i recommend you to read uh, this uh, article and detailed comment about the complications after doing a biopsy in cases of acute kidney injury so kidney biopsy related complications in hospitalized patient this article shows that the these are the complication the need for transfusion and geographic intervention hematoma re-imaging for complications as you see complications are uh, increasing are higher in this category of patients this means that all these patients should be followed after doing a biopsy and the predictors for complications uh, after doing a biopsy for patients admitted with acute kidney injury include patients with borderline platelet female gender and uh, high blood urine nitrogen should show so we should uh, follow up the patient meticulously this is another case a 36 year old male patient presents with uh, proteinuria 2.5 gram per day creatine 2.5 he is on aspirin 81 milligram per day b or not to be this is the uh, this is interesting case uh, this is one of the important studies showing the risk factor of for bleeding complication after nephrologist again nephrologist performed native renal biopsy and one important is that the bleeding after the uh, even aspirin is not uh, high and they recommend uh, to uh, do but here this is no aspirin and aspirin you can, you can fix is stable and the key message is uh, you may proceed for biopsy for patients with uh, on aspirin so long as the biopsy is indicated here the patient has acute kidney injury and the proteinuria so with the uh, we are eager to know the biopsy to guide the treatment so we may do biopsy for these patients okay and this is another for uh, biopsy uh, effect of aspirin therapy on ultrasound guided allograft biopsy this is kidney transplant patient on aspirin here the dose of aspirin is important aspirin use was not significantly associated with increased risk of bleeding complication except for the use of bigger dose of uh, aspirin 325 milligram of aspirin within three days however this meta-analysis although it is not strong is not high quality meta-analysis but i agree with the statement is 
uh, to stop aspirin for 7 to 10 days before doing the non-emergent biopsies. So uh, I advocate the policy of stopping aspirin whenever the treatment is not uh, urgent. But if we are dealing with an urgent case, we can go ahead for doing a biopsy based on the data, published data, uh, to save the time for starting uh, the emergent treatment. This is a 26-year-old female, proteinuria, high creatinine, and in warfarin. So the same example, but here I changed aspirin to warfarin. To do, to be or not to be, while the patient is in warfarin, no, not uh, I agree with you. And this is a very interesting uh, recommendations. Here, uh, we ha if we are on warfarin, look at the risk of uh, thromboembolism. If the patient is on high risk of thromboembolism, use bridging anticoagulation. What's meant by bridging anticoagulation is to shift from warfarin to heparin, and then to stop heparin immediately before the biopsy. If the patient in the low risk category, just to stop warfarin for seven days or five days, uh, resume uh, 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 after that, if you use uh, unfractionate heparin, stop for six hours before the procedure. If you use low molecular weight heparin, uh, 24 hours before the procedure, uh, for procedures at high risk of bleeding, resume to 48 hours to 72 hours after the procedure. Look at aspirin. That is interesting. If the patient is on high risk for cardiovascular event, continue aspirin. But again, it is suggestion and the evidence not strong. So I like and prefer the safety, but as you see from the previous uh, publications, we can do biopsy on aspirin. This is a 56-year-old female, presents with acute kidney injury and multiple myeloma. Serum free light chain is 350 milligram per liter. To be or not to be, just raise the label. Why to be? Uh, the, uh, this is the one of important uh, publications. Uh, to biopsy or not to biopsy? That is the question in myeloma cast nephropathy. If serum free light chain is less than 500 milligram per liter, uh, this is an indication for biopsy because myeloma cast nephropathy is unlikely in the presence of uh, this uh, uh, level of free light chain. And this is the, if you do biopsy for myeloma, you will find the myeloma cast in 30 to 50 percent of the cases, but you may find interstitial nephritis, uh, fibrosis without cast nephropathy, amyloidosis, light chain deposition disease, acute necrosis, uh, urate nephropathy, tubular crystal uh, hypercalcemia, focal segmental glomerulosis. So this is why if you don't find high level of serum free light chain you may think of biopsy. And this is a histological feature of myeloma cast nephropathy, eosinophilic of infractured cast, medullary portion of the distal nephron predominantly, intratubular and interstitial macrophages, and giant cell uh, cells in, the, in, the res in response to casts, interstitial inflammation, fibrosis, tuber atrophy, crystalline inclusions, minimal glomerular uh, abnormality, minimal or no vascular changes. Okay? Uh, this is the a 46-year-old male patient presents with proteinuria to gram per day, creatin 0.8, and phospholipase E2 antibodies positive. Is it mandatory to do biopsy here, or you can follow him? Uh, what do you, do you what can you do? You see, to be or not to be? Not to be. This is the if this is from recent publication, the Kidney International this month. So uh, if you have positive antiplar and then assess the risk of the patient. If the patient in the low risk category, like the, the, the one the patient that I just mentioned, no kidney biopsy, but follow him. If he uh, transfers to high risk, do biopsy. If antiblar is negative, here we do biopsy. And this is the criteria for low risk, less than 3.5 gram per day. Do you remember the patient here, two gram per day? So uh, less than 3.5 gram is uh, low risk. Provide that serum creatinine uh, is not increased, uh, estimate GFR is not reduced, or there is no explanation. Uh, uh, Brotonuria above 8 gram, 
presence of low molecular weight proteins, uh, blur antibody level, and evolution. So the, all these points can consider if a blur antibody, anti-blur is increasing, so this denotes high risk. So if you have, if this is the patient with positive anti-blur, with normal kidney function, just a proteinuria, I follow him. If proteinuria increases, creatinine increases, or anti-blur level increases, so and so, we may think of uh, doing biopsy, okay? And this this was the rationale of this article, non-invasive diagnosis of primary membrane nephropathy using phospholipase A2 receptor antibodies. And here, they either use the, uh, uh, starting with immune fluorescence, then shift to ELISA, or uh, starting with ELISA and shifting to the immune fluorescence, there is cutoff point, that we can uh, diagnose without uh, biopsy. So again, if you are dealing with low-risk patient and you have the facil facilities to monitor and to measure anti-blur, and here the, the, these two uh, labs prefer doing to test immune fluorescence and ELISA, or ELISA and immune fluorescence according to the preference of order. So uh, by this scenario, if you have a low-risk, you can postpone biopsy. I think this is the last case. A 56 year old male patient, he presents with a small renal mass, less than two centimeter. And I think this is a urology case, but uh, we should be aware about that because in the past we are afraid of dissemination if this is malignancy to be disseminated. What about the status of doing biopsy for a small renal mass? This is what I'm going to uh, show to you. This is the, uh, the article. The, here, the indications for doing the biopsy for a small renal mass includes include ablation therapy, if we think of ablation therapy, undetermined mass, before systemic treatment, active surveillance, technically difficult partial nephrectomy, and suspicion of lymphoma or metastasis. These are the indications of doing the biopsy for renal mass. Contraindications include urothelial carcinoma, no, no way. High hemorrhagic risk, especially when intratumoral aneurysm are present. And this is the approach. Renal mass is less than four centimeter. Lymphoma metastasis or abscess suspected. Uh, is active prevalence scheduled? Is ablation period thought? Is patient and team willing to observe a benign lesion? If the answer for any of this is yes, we can go ahead to uh, the, if there are clinical benefit to histological risk assessment, yes, this is at the end, we go to biopsy. So long as there is no hazards of doing the, of doing a biopsy from bleeding and the drugs, and we should uh, uh, look at medications and withhold what to be hold, withhold. Another, uh, this is another chapter showing the same. If you have renal mass uh, and you are suspecting benign, uh, favorable, uh, active surveillance, intermediate, less than two centimeter, above uh, uh, or uh, indeterminate, indeterminate mass, uh, do a repeated biopsy, repeat biopsy. So there is a role to doing biopsy, okay? So again, renal biopsy, if, the, if it is a small, less than four centimeter, and you have either favorable outcome, intermediate outcome, uh, here, if it is unfavorable, go directly to treating surgically. Indeterminate, you can repeat biopsy. And this is just to show you that always we put in the exam of the first part of Medina Nephrology at Mansoura University. We'll consider cases. Here, the, this is the case scenario. 50-year-old male patient, diabetic, hypertensive, 15 years. And this is what we uh, discussed before. This is the warfarin uh, statement. And the, uh, so... We should think of the, the when to, uh, to do or when not to do biopsy. So we have emotion to do biopsy, and we should be cautious. So uh, it is better uh, to uh, secure the environment, to do all the facilities uh, to uh, reduce the risk, and to go ahead. If we know that the biopsy will not change the treatment, and it will put the patient in harm, this invasive procedure, we should decline doing biopsy. Okay, and this is what we learned in the center, to discuss the cases with this uh, team, 
uh, and the wisdom wisdom of decision making is of paramount importance let us go direct very fast to special scenarios if you have this patient after the biopsy what is your diagnosis this is the uh, your urinothorax so what uh, may be associated with trauma that lead to the presence of urine within the chest and this is a patient and this is the radiology CT followed by sudden flank pain seven days after biopsy and you can you see here the hematoma big hematoma after the biopsy and this is the the arrowhead refers to pseudoaneurysm another case this is a, a renal transplant patient who presents with uh, acute graft function after doing graft biopsy uh, uh, do you know the diagnosis the diagnosis is hematoma this is hematoma followed by increased resistive index and this is beige kidney in renal transplant patients what is this? This is Doppler study shows low resistive index, so it is fistula, yes. And the uh, this is the predicted uh, incidence of, bio, of fistula after biopsy, 14% according to this publication. And this is the review of our article. And this is, as I mentioned before, uh, fistula is usually uh, asymptomatic and innocent, but if it's associated with hypertension, acute kidney injury, or uh, derangement, we may think of intervention. What this? This is a patient after nine years, and this is CT scan. What is this, Muhammad? What this? This is V. What is V? Renal vein. So this is the fistula diagnosed uh, nine years after. Uh, this means that we should put in mind to uh, follow up the patients after doing the biopsies. It's a case of pseudoaneurysm. You can find here the the sign of pseudoaneurysm, and this is the uh, after intervention radiology. Uh, now, what about the doing a biopsy for lobus nephritis? In the beginning of diagnosis, biopsy is a must. Okay, so long as there is proteinuria above open to five gram or one gram, it's better to do biopsy for the native. De novo cases of lupus. But what about doing serial biopsy, surveillance biopsy, or protocol biopsy is still a point of research. And this is the study discussing the utility of repeat renal biopsy in lupus nephritis, a single center, uh, including 270 cases for whom the 24% uh, had serial biopsy. Which is important. If you have a case the de novo diagnosis is class 2, class 2, or class 5, where is 5, 5. Here, the uh, transition toward the proliferative or mixed proliferative with class 5 is expected. So here, I think, uh, doing the repeated biopsy may be indicated in this scenario. And another uh, important issue that with repeating a biopsy, we have a good look at the kidney. So here, the severity of tuba atrophy increases with repeating biopsy. And the uh, fibrosis, severity of interstitial scarring increased here. This is the severity, the black one, uh, the, tie, the biopsy number one, and this is with repeating biopsy, fibrosis and scarring increased. So the conclusion of this article, repeat renal biopsy is an important tool to guide management. In particular, in those with initial class two or five who flare, although Class transitions cannot be predicted by clinical parameters. Serum creatine levels correlates with the degree of tubular interstitial damage. So uh, if we are in academic center, and this is one of the immediate issues that we are indulged currently uh, to assess the utility of repeating biopsy, I think biopsy can add to the management because there is no perfect clinical pathological correlation. So you may find the patient in clinical remission, but the pathology is active. So in this scenario, it is better to prolong the immune suppression, especially if you think of maintenance immune suppression, withdrawal or failure. So it's better uh, to do biopsy in this scenario. So again, de novo biopsy for lupus is, is mandatory. Secondary, if there is a flare or complication, or no response, we may think of free biopsy. In this scenario, I don't consider this as a protocol biopsy. Protocol biopsy is still an investigatory tool. We may think in class one, five, because of their shift. In children, 
the issue of biopsy in children, this is a scenario, the nephrotic syndrome, uh, heavy proteinuria, if it is above 50 mg per kg, or 40 mg per square meter per hour, hypoalbuminemia, generalized diatema, uh, in the presence of urinary abnormalities, acute interferon, coronary disease, so, uh, and this is the different definitions. I'm not going to discuss this, but just to show you that in children you may find any pathology. So C1Q nephropathy, C3 glomerulopathy, focal segmental sclerosis, IgE membrane proliferative, and GBM uh, nephropathy, post infectious thrombotic microangiopathy. The key message is, if the case is not typical, minimal change is better to do biopsy, because you may find another diagnosis. If you go to the, this site, which I am proud of, you'll find here, this is the index, including 3,698 lectures and this number of videos. If you search the index about uh, biopsy here, the, uh, you'll find 22 lectures and 14 videos. Uh, so uh, please go ahead and enjoy these educations. And one of the important messages that I'd like to, e to end all my presentation with is we should be and we should always be uh, students. A doctor is a student until he dies. Once he considers himself or herself not a student anymore, the doctor inside him dies. Thank you very much. Hoping you the best. And if you have any questions, uh, please send to my email.